the well-known Trader Joe's Company, operates a chain of unique grocery stores that combine a warehouse club, a natural food store, a specialty grocer, and a neighborhood store. About 98% of the assortment is food, much of it natural, cruelty-free, and made without artificial ingredients. Pastas, seafood, meatless foods, baked items, frozen meals, chips and other snacks, coffee and tea, nuts, cheeses, vitamins, candies, pet food, wine and beer, and fresh products. In the video that we have for you today, we will take a look back at Trader Joe's history of success. Trader Joe's was founded in 1967, but its roots are in the late 1950s Pronto Markets chain. Rex Aldred Company launched Pronto Markets in 1958. Rexall wanted to enter the convenience and food stand market. New Rexall division head is Joe Calombi. In the 1950s and 1960s, Calombi expanded Pronto in Orange County. Despite its expansion, Pronto faced profit pressures in the mid-1960s due to increased competition. Southland Corp. This 7-Eleven chain is especially aggressively expanding in Pronto's region. Rex all decided to abandon its Pronto Markets division in 1966. Still CEO, Calombi could try to buy out the chain he'd built or bail out and find a new retail niche. Calombi knew when he bought Pronto that his previous growth strategy was ineffective. 7-Eleven targeted his customers and he lacked the resources to compete. Calombi considered two social trends when creating a marketing plan. First, educated and sophisticated consumers expect more from shopping. Second, global travel, made possible by falling jumbo jet airfares, exposed Americans to new foods. Calombi opened the first Trader Joe's in South Pasadena in 1967. The rest of the Pronto chain became Trader Joe's. Calombi envisioned Pronto as an upscale market near schools while Pronto's liquor business was profitable. Orange County's economy tanked when the aerospace industry collapsed in 1971. During the recession, Calombi's customers stopped hosting parties and sales fall. He ordered unique food items from around the world and labeled them with fun phrases like kiwi from paradise juice and look ma, no refined sugar. Calombi's new Trader Joe's store stocked health foods and beverages and avoided Coca-Cola and Budweiser. Trader Joe's steadily increased sales and profits until 1976. In that year, California deregulated supermarkets and changes hurt Trader Joe's liquor business. Trader Joe's quickly adapted to the deregulated grocery industry as the giant supermarkets expanded. Calombi rejected convenience store inventory and marketed Trader Joe's as upscale and value-oriented. Since the 1970s, Trader Joe's has sold cheap, unique wines, cheeses, and coffees. Calombi added nuts, pasta, fish, vegetables, prepared snacks, and meals. Carl and Theo Albrecht, owners of Europe's Aldi discount stores, bought Trader Joe's in 1979. Calombi remained CEO. In the 1980s, Calombi perfected Trader Joe's inventory and market position and grew the California chain. That meant positioning Trader Joe's stores to appeal to the emerging upwardly mobile, or yuppie crowd. Unique beers and wines remained a draw, but Calombi added perishables and dry foods. Calombi boosted his inventory's appeal by focusing on value and targeting well-educated, less affluent consumers. Most stores had a few wine and alcohol shelves. By the late 1980s, a typical Trader Joe's was 6,000 square feet, half the size of a Los Angeles supermarket. Trader Joe's grew internally and with the Albrecht family's help, paid cash for all purchases. Innovative advertising saves money and Trader Joe's sold 80% private label products. A unique buying program cut costs as fresh salsa and unique pastas were supplied by small, independent contractors. Trader Joe's also bought their discontinued products. Trader Joe's bought from contractors and suppliers in America and Europe and innovative inventory and pricing led to huge profit margins. Trader Joe's made $150 million in 1989. This is extremely high compared to grocery industry norms. Due to non-prime store location, the company's fixed overhead was low. By the late 1980s, Calombi had opened 30 Trader Joe's stores, mostly in Los Angeles and San Diego. I was approaching coronary age and wanted to retire. Calombi told the Los Angeles Business Journal on February 26, 1990. He added, but I wanted to leave the company well run. That's when John Shields, 55, succeeded Calombi in 1988. 
When he joined Trader Joe's, Shields had known Calombi for 40 years. Calombi admired Shields' retail sense when they were fraternity brothers at Stanford in 1950. After college, he joined R.H. Macy's in New York and aimed to become senior vice president by 40. In 1978, he joined Mervyn's and helped grow the chain from 38 to 180 stores. Trader Joe's was next. Shields kept much of Trader Joe's unique product mix and marketing strategy after taking over the chain. Trader Joe's quickly bought $1 million worth of Napa Valley Mihaly wine. Japanese investors bought the winery to make sake or rice wine. As they didn't need the popular U.S. wines, Trader Joe's bought 240,000 bottles at a discount. Trader Joe's sold 3,000 cases of mid-level Chardonnay for $2.99, while nearby liquor stores charged $8.50. These deals helped Trader Joe's cash registers in the 1990s. Trader Joe's did well despite the recession and California's defense industry downturn. Wines, nuts, cheeses, dairy, frozen foods, candies, bakery items, juice, and dog food were added. Trader Joe's became the largest retailer of pistachio nuts, Holden coffee, and brie in California, among other distinctions. Shields grew the business and by late 1991, California had 43 Trader Joe's, including several in the Bay Area. The company's annual sales topped $250 million and stores averaged 7,500 square feet. In 1992 and 1993, Shields expanded Trader Joe's into Phoenix into 59 stores by late 1993. The chain was generating $500 million annually 40% from imported goods and eyeing expansion in Seattle and Portland. Trader Joe's had 1,500 items in each store, including many from former Soviet bloc countries like Hungary and the Czech Republic. New U.S. trade agreements in the Caribbean boosted the company's Caribbean purchases. The mid-1990s were Trader Joe's most aggressive expansion period. Trader Joe's had 65 stores in 1994 and grossed $600 million, a 10% annual per store increase over the past five years. The company opened stores in Seattle, Oregon, and Washington a few years later. By 1995, Trader Joe's had 72 stores and was making $1,000 per square foot. Trader Joe's expanded eastward in 1996. In three years, 21 stores opened in Boston, D.C., and New York. In the 2000s, Trader Joe's grew and moved to California. Cleveland and Detroit were planned for Midwest expansion. In 2001, Trader Joe's outlets averaged 8,000 to 12,000 square feet, double the size of some of the original stores. Trader Joe's president, Doug Roch, boasted that the company had the highest sales per square foot of any grocery chain in America. At the end of that year, the company announced it would eliminate genetically modified ingredients from its private label products within a year. In 2002, Trader Joe's had 160 stores in 15 states and $1.67 billion in sales. Business Week reported in 2004 that from 1990 to 2001, Trader Joe's profited 10 times as much and opened five times as many stores. Business Week stated that the company had the highest sales per square foot of any grocery store in the United States in February of 2008. Some years later, in 2016, Fortune magazine estimated sales to be $1,750 in merchandise per square foot, which is more than double the sales generated by Whole Foods. Brand namesake Joe Calombi passed away in the year 2020. His memoirs were published in 2021. That's all for today. Which product do you like the most from Joe's? Tell us in the comment section. Big Company Business will be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.